The lecture today will be on Hanel's quint. These are important concepts related to your development of complete denture occlusion. If you study this section, you will have a much better understanding of how occlusal schemes work. In addition, you will prepare yourself for some questions that may appear on the national boards. Hanel described five factors which are referred to as Hanel's quint that affect the occlusal balance. They are condylar inclination, incisal guidance, occlusal plane inclination, cuspal inclination, and compensating curve. We're going to discuss those factors. Bielman elaborated on Hanel's quint and described the interrelationship of these five factors in order to maintain balanced occlusion. It's shown using Thielman's formula shown on the slide, and we will discuss the interrelationship between these factors. The C relates to the end product of balanced occlusion. I remember the five uh, factors position in the formula this way. The factors that appear on the top of the formula are located on the upper jaw and the temporomandibular joint complex. The factors on the lower part of the formula are related more to the mandibular arch and how we might change things to make our complete denture occlusal scheme work. The condylar inclination is the first of the quint. It is totally out of control of the dentist. The patient presents with a given condylar inclination. It is represented by the orange area in the right of that square and it symbolizes the glenoid fossa and the angle of the eminence of the patient which cannot be adjusted by the dentist. How do we know how to make the setting on our articulator agree with that of the patient? That's right. We have to mount the case and make a protrusive record and adjust the condylar inclination on the articulator. That setting is constant, so once you have done the protrusive record, you can record the left and right results in your patient's records, and you do not have to take that protrusive record again. The record is necessary for what types of occlusal schemes? Hopefully you said anatomic occlusion, full cross arch balance, and balanced occlusion using balancing ramps. The second factor on the top of our formula is incisal guidance. Anatomically, this is the angle formed by the intersection of the plane of occlusion and the line within the sagittal plane that's determined by the incisal edges of the maxillary and mandibular incisors when the teeth are in maximum intercuspation. You have control of this factor on your complete denture occlusal scheme within the limits of aesthetics and phonetics. We minimize incisal guidance when possible in complete dentures to minimize inclined tipping forces on the prosthesis. That guidance in natural occlusion is controlled by the maxillary and mandibular incisors when the patient's in maximum intercuspation. It can be controlled by the dentist within limits when he does crown and bridge restorations. The first factor on the lower part of the formula is the occlusal plane. This is the average plane established by the incisal edges of the anterior teeth and the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth. Generally, it's not a plane at all, but represents the planar mean of the curvature of these surfaces. In complete dentures, it is relatively parallel to the denture base foundation. Another factor that influences the occlusion is cuspal inclination. The inclines of those cusps will affect the way teeth will slide over one another in conjunction with the other factors of Thielman's formula. A cusp is the cone or that chevron-shaped protuberance on the crown of a tooth that forms the occlusal surface. The cusp angle or inclination is the angle made by the average slope of the cusp with the cusp plane measured mesiodistally and buccolingually. The compensating curve is the anterior posterior curving in the medial plane and the medial lateral curving in the frontal plane 
Within the alignment of the occluding surfaces and incisal edges of the artificial teeth that is used to develop balanced occlusion for complete dentures. It's in a way a blend of the curve of Wilson and the curve of Spee and is only designated in complete denture occlusal schemes. We're talking about the compensating curve. When all of these five factors are in quote balance, then what you end up with is C, which represents balanced occlusion for the complete denture occlusal scheme. If you have the five factors all working together and you have balanced occlusion, the teeth will remain in contact in the anterior and posterior when you go through all the excursive movements. The dotted teeth represent the position of the teeth in maximum intercuspation. When the patient goes into protrusive, the solid outlined teeth show the path the teeth take in protrusive. Note that they remain in contact with the opposing arch. They will remain in contact during working, non-working, and protrusive when you have balanced occlusion. Now let's look at what happens to our balanced occlusion if one of the factors in Thielman's equation is changed without altering any other factor. It will affect balanced occlusion dramatically. We will change the incisal guidance. Instead of this angle shown here, we will create a steeper incisal guidance as shown on the next slide. If you change the incisal guidance and you increase the angle and make a deeper bite, then all of the teeth will disclude as the anterior tooth will dictate what happens in the protrusive. This would cause tipping of the denture bases when the patient incises food and would create great instability of the mandibular denture base, which is already compromised. As you can see, with this increase in steepness of the incisal guidance, the posteriors are discluding as illustrated by the solid white teeth and the condylar path is also altered. The, this creates great instability in the mandibular or maxillary complete denture for that matter. We have no periodontal ligament attached to the teeth to hold the prosthesis in place. The placement of the anterior teeth is governed by aesthetics and phonetics. If we need to change the position of the anterior teeth, then we must alter other factors in Thielman's formula to compensate for this change. We try to keep the incisal guidance to a minimum in complete denture occlusion to avoid this problem of discluding and tipping the dentures. We would need to change the compensating curve to offset this imbalance if we are to place these incisors in this position. The increased incisal guidance can be compensated for by increasing one or a combination of the other factors on the lower part of Thielman's formula. You can increase the occlusal plane, cuspal inclination, or compensating curve. One, we can increase the occlusal plane as illustrated in this particular slide. A second option would be to increase our cuspal inclination. If we do that, our cusp will end up being taller and that would decrease that space that's created in protrusive. This is the second option on the bottom of Thielman's formula. Lastly, we can increase the compensating curve, bring it up so that our premolars and molars are in contact when we go into protrusive. This slide illustrates the change in the compensating curve and its effect upon the incisal guidance and disclusion of the posterior teeth. In this particular case, because we increased that compensating curve, the posteriors are now in occlusion when the patient goes into protrusive. A change in cuspal inclination will affect balanced occlusion. For example, if zero degree cusp teeth are selected in the posterior, those teeth will disclude if there's any anterior guidance or vertical overlap of those anteriors in the setup. This slide shows the pathway that the maxillary denture will take in this particular setup with posterior flat plane occlusion.
When the incisal edges of the anteriors move to an end-to-end -end position, the posterior teeth will be out of occlusion when flat plane teeth are used for this occlusal scheme. The posterior exclusion can be compensated for by increasing the occlusal plane, the compensating curve, or both, or by placement of a balancing ramp that can be added to the posterior area. This is a balanced monoplane occlusion that we're showing. The balancing ramps provide posterior contact in eccentric positions similar to cuspal inclination. The ramps are created using a mounted case that has the condylar inclination set to the patient's protrusive record, and ideally even lateral records can be utilized. The goal is to have three-point contact between the maxillary and mandibular denture in all eccentric movements, working, non-working, and protrusive. This will prevent tipping of the dentures when the patient has parafunctional activity, and it will also minimize tipping even though the patient has a bolus of food between the dentures. When using zero degree teeth, it is also recommended that you decrease the incisal guidance on the anterior. When you decrease the incisal guidance, there will be a decrease in the separation of the posterior teeth when the mandible goes into all the eccentric positions, working, non-working, and protrusive. You can see that when going to the end-to-end -end position, the zero-degree posteriors have less of a separation in the eccentric movements than when you had that incisal guidance that was steeper. By decreasing the incisal guidance, you will find that the balancing ramp inclination will be significantly reduced. This doesn't say that there will be no balancing ramp because there may be some disclusion in that posterior requiring a balancing ramp for balance, but it will be significantly less. Let's not lose track of the fact that the minimized posterior disclusion can also be compensated for by increasing the occlusal plane and or increasing the compensating curve. We can utilize those two other factors on the bottom half of Thielman's formula. The minimized posterior disclusion can now also be compensated for by increasing the occlusal plane and or the compensating curve. This illustrates raising the occlusal plane to make the difference in that space. Here is a summary of some of our laws of articulation. First of all, the condylar inclination is one factor that the dentist has no control of. It is a property of the patient. This factor is obtained by making protrusive and or lateral jaw registrations from the patient. We have stated that in general, it's suggested that the incisal guidance for the complete denture patient be minimized. Now, this is done within the confines of aesthetics and phonetics in order to reduce the horizontal forces of occlusion. The occlusal plane cannot be altered substantially since uh, functional requirements dictate its position. That occlusal plane is usually kept relatively parallel to the denture base foundation. The degree of cuspal inclination is dependent upon multiple factors. The residual ridges come into play, how tall are they, the neuromuscular control of your patient, have they had strokes, uh, do they have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Um, also the aesthetics and phonetics govern some of that. However, in general, it is best to say for complete dentures that we reduce cuspal inclination to help reduce horizontal forces of occlusion, which allows denture bases to be unstable on ridges. The compensating curve is very helpful in obtaining balanced occlusion, and depending on the posterior tooth forms, it can easily be corrected to facilitate posterior tooth contacts in eccentric positions. 
Bilateral balanced denture occlusion is usually worked into the occlusal scheme when anatomical teeth are used. It is the stable, simultaneous contact of opposing upper and lower teeth in centric relation position with a smooth bilateral gliding contact to any eccentric position within the normal range of mandibular function. It is developed to lessen or limit the tipping or rotation of the denture bases in relation to the supporting structures. Balanced occlusion can also be obtained with flat plane teeth using balancing ramps. This is a summary showing centric occlusion, protrusive, working, and balancing for the full bilaterally balanced anatomical occlusion. Very nice pictures, but showing complete simultaneous contact of all of the teeth when in the excursive movements. From the glossary of prosthodontic terms, condyle guidance is defined as mandibular guidance generated by the condyle and articulator disc traversing the contours of the glenoid fossa. Condylar inclination is the angle formed by the inclination of the condylar guide control surface of an articulator and a specified reference point. From the glossary of prosthodontic terms, some definitions for incisal guidance angle. One, anatomically, the angle is formed by the intersection of the plane of occlusion and the line within the sagittal plane determined by the incisal edges of the maxillary and mandibular central incisors when the teeth are in maximum interconstipation. On an articulator, that angle formed in the sagittal plane between the plane of reference and the slope of the anterior guide table as viewed in the sagittal plane. From the glossary of prosthodontic terms, the occlusal plane is the average plane established by the incisal edges of the anterior and occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth. Generally, it's not a plane, but represents a planar mean of the curvature of the surfaces. In complete dentures, it relatively parallels the denture base foundation. Number two, it is a surface of wax occlusion rims contoured to guide in an arrangement of denture teeth. And three, it is also a flat metal plate used in arranging denture teeth. The glossary of prosthodontic terms definition of cuspal inclination. A cusp is a cone or a chevron shaped protuberance on the crown of a tooth that forms the occlusal surface. The cusp angle is the angle made by the average slope of a cusp with the cusp plane measured mesial distally and buccolingually. In the glossary of prosthodontic terms, the compensating curve is the anterior-posterior curving in the median plane and the mediolateral curving in the frontal plane within the alignment of the occluding surfaces and incisal edges of artificial teeth that is used to develop balanced occlusion for complete dentures. It is also the arc introduced in the construction of complete removable dental prostheses to compensate for the opening influences produced by the condylar and incisal guidances during lateral and protrusive mandibular excursive movements. It's also called the compensating curvature or the compensating curve. Bilateral balanced occlusion in the glossary of prosthodontic terms is referred to as bilateral balanced articulation, also balanced articulation. It is the bilateral, simultaneous anterior and posterior occlusal contact of the teeth in centric and eccentric positions.